Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're talking about news that's causing quite a stir in the Linux world. Debian, one of the most historic and conservative distributions in the open source ecosystem, has announced that it will integrate Rust code into its APT package manager by May 2026. Yes, you heard that right. APT, the beating heart of package management for Debian and all its derivatives like Ubuntu, is about to undergo a significant transformation. And this is no small matter, considering Debian's historically cautious philosophy when it comes to adopting new technologies. Get comfortable, because today we'll analyze what this decision means, why it was made, and what consequences it will have for the entire Debian ecosystem. Let's take a step back. The announcement came directly from Julian Andres Claude, a longtime Debian developer and one of the primary maintainers of APT. In a message to the Debian Devil mailing list, Claude clarified the team's intentions. Starting in May 2026, Rust will become a necessary dependency for APT. What does this mean in practice? It means that the Rust compiler, its standard library, and parts of the Sequoia ecosystem will be integrated into Debian's core package management infrastructure. We're not talking about a marginal experiment or a satellite project, but a structural modification to the heart of the distribution. The initial integration will focus on critical areas, parsing .deb, .r, and .tar files, and HTTP signature verification. These are fundamental components, the ones that are executed every time you install, update, or remove a package on your Debian system. And here comes the crucial point. Claude emphasized that these components would strongly benefit from memory-safe languages and a stronger approach to unit testing. In other words, this is a matter of security and reliability. But why Rust specifically? According to supporters of this move, the main problem is memory management in C and C++. APT is currently written primarily in C++, a powerful language, but one that requires a lot of attention when it comes to managing memory. Buffer overflow, use after free, null pointer dereference. These are some of the bugs that can lead to security vulnerabilities. And we're talking about software that handles the installation of programs with root privileges on your system. Rust theoretically offers an elegant solution to this problem. Its compile time guarantees prevent an entire class of memory-related errors. It's not magic, it's simply a more sophisticated type system and a borrow checker that checks that you don't make a mess with pointers before even executing the code. But it's not just about security. Claude also mentions a more rigorous approach to unit testing. Rust has a testing culture integrated into the language itself. Writing tests is easy, running them is part of the standard workflow, and the community considers them fundamental. This means more robust code and fewer regressions. And then there's the Sequoia ecosystem. Sequoia is a Rust implementation of the OpenPGP standard and is already used in other important projects. Integrating it into APT means having more modern and secure cryptographic signature management. That said, Rust is not a miraculous solution. It has its learning curve, and managing ownership and lifetimes can be frustrating for those coming from more permissive languages. But for critical software like APT, the benefits far outweigh the costs. Now let's talk about the consequences, because this decision is not without important implications. First of all, there's the question of supported architectures. Claude was very clear in his message, Maintainers of Debian ports that don't have a working Rust toolchain have six months to fix the situation, or they must consider abandoning those ports. This is significant. Debian is famous for supporting an incredible number of architectures, not just x86 score 64 and ARM, but also MIPS, PowerPC, RISC-V, and even more exotic architectures. Some of these might not have a mature and functional Rust compiler. Claude's philosophy is clear, and he expressed it openly. It's important for the project as a whole to be able to move forward and rely on modern tools and technologies and not be held back by trying to shoehorn modern software on retro computing devices. It's a pragmatic position, but also controversial. Debian has always had a strong emphasis on portability and legacy hardware support. This move marks a change in priorities. 
security and modernity come before universal compatibility. For end users of Debian on mainstream architectures like x86-64 or ARM-64, practically nothing will change. You probably won't even notice the transition. But for those using more exotic architectures, it could be the end of the road. This announcement doesn't come in a vacuum. Debian is joining a much broader trend in open source. The Linux kernel has already started accepting Rust code since 2022. Mozilla's Firefox is written in significant part in Rust. System D, the init system that many love to hate, is integrating Rust components. And the list continues. New Core Utils has a fork in Rust. There are Rust implementations of fundamental utilities like grep and ls that are faster and more secure. What we're seeing is a generational shift. C and C++ have dominated the system and software infrastructure for decades. Detractors of these languages point to their security limitations that have become increasingly evident. So Rust represents an alternative that doesn't require sacrificing performance to obtain security. And Debian, despite its reputation as a conservative distribution, is aligning itself with this reality. As Claude says, you can't stay stuck in the past when it comes to security and reliability. Look, I have to be honest with you. I'm generally opposed to this pervasive spread of rust into every corner of the operating system. And yes, I know this is an unpopular position in 2025, but let me explain. First of all, there's a question of complexity. Rust is a complex language with a steep learning curve. The borrow checker, ownership, lifetimes, all of this requires a completely different way of thinking about programming. We're creating an increasingly high barrier to entry for those who want to contribute to fundamental system software. APT is a piece of software that has been developed, debugged, and perfected for decades. It works, and it works well. Sure, it's had bugs, but what software hasn't? My question is, are we solving real problems, or are we chasing the hype? And then there's the question of dependencies. Integrating Rust means bringing along the Rust compiler, the standard library, and the entire ecosystem. We're talking about hundreds of megabytes of additional dependencies for a package manager that should be lean and essential. It's like bringing a cannon to kill a fly. But what worries me most is the general trend. Rust is getting everywhere, in the Linux kernel, in system D, in the core utils, and this seems more like a fad to me than a real technical necessity. It's become almost a dogma. C and C++ are dangerous, Rust is salvation. But the truth is that you can write safe C and C++ with the right practices, static analysis tools, sanitizers, and rigorous testing. Look at new core utils. They're utilities that have worked perfectly for decades. They've gone through countless cycles of bug fixing and hardening. Replacing them with Rust versions doesn't automatically make them better. It only introduces new risks related to code not tested in the field. And then there's the philosophical aspect. Linux and open source were born with C. It's the language that enabled portability, simplicity, transparency. We're abandoning decades of accumulated knowledge for a language that, yes, has interesting features, but is fundamentally more complex and more difficult to master. So, what can we expect? Probably this is just the first phase. Claude talks about an initial rewrite of specific components, but it's easy to imagine that, if the experiment succeeds, more and more parts of APT will be rewritten in Rust over time. It's not an immediate revolution. We're talking about May 2026 as the initial date, but it's a clear signal of the direction one of the most important and influential Linux projects is taking. For users, this should theoretically translate into a more secure, more reliable APT with fewer critical bugs and fewer security vulnerabilities. For Debian developers, it means embracing modern tools and a more robust way of developing software. It's an important change, and it will be interesting to see how it evolves in the coming years. Debian is making a bet on the future, and personally, I don't know if it's the right bet. Honestly, I believe that in a couple of years everything will be rewritten in Rust, and I believe our ecosystem will divide ideologically with forks and components that will remain in C, refusing any intrusion of Rust code inside. 
Yes, because by now it's becoming an ideological battle and a race to rewrite, effectively positioning Rust not as a programming language in its own right, but as the natural and predestined replacement for C and everything written in this language.